Well, it's another lovely afternoon. Just finished having dinner. Got home from work a little while ago. And I try to do a little project every afternoon when I get home from work. And uh, one of them is our simple pump. You see me standing here next to our pump? Yep, we still live off grid. We get all our water through a hand pump. Our oldest son pumps most of the water, believe it or not. Um, but it, it has a little problem. If any of you are already off grid and have a simple pump, or thinking about going off grid and looking at having a well and a simple pump, this is good information for you. When, when I first uh, considered getting a simple pump, I loved the idea that you could pump into a pressure tank system and get running water in your house. And I watched some videos on that. I actually talked to the owner of Simple Pump many times on the phone and I was sold. So when I ordered my Simple Pump, I ordered it with a one-way check valve. Uh, you'll know you have the one-way check valve because it's a large brass valve. Looks similar, looks similar almost to this. And it will have two tiny little ports coming out of it and one of them will have a gauge with a dial in it. So I had that connected to the well as well, to the well as well. Ha. So what happened is, is that during winter time, your well water in your spout, whatever spout you've chosen to hook uh, to the threaded port on the front of your simple pump, the, um, the spout can freeze if there's water sitting in here. Well, I was using the one-way check valve as the spout and water froze in it. Well, the one-way check valve then became blocked. So we were tr having trouble understanding why we'd come out here during the winter time to pump and we know that our weep hole's in the correct place and that our water shouldn't be freezing and we couldn't get water. So we were forcing the pump. And after pouring water on the spout and on the pump and playing with it, we'd finally start getting water. So fast forward now, way past winter, and what is happening is it's taking a bunch of pumps more than it should to get water to the top. The reason I say that is, is because the, the simple pump works with a vacuum and that is from the bottom of where you pump your water line in the ground, the water comes all the way up to the top of your pump and out. Then while it's holding pressure inside the pipes, the water level will drop to down just below the weep hole and your weep hole will be set in your pipes below your frost line in the area you live. So when the water line drops below that weep hole, the vacuum still stays on the line and you pump a few times and water comes out. If there is no pressure, no vacuum on the line, the water will always drop all the way back down to the bottom of where your pump's at. Our pump is set at about, um, I think, 200 or 250 feet deep. I can't remember exactly, but I want to say it's it's actually I think it's 200 feet deep. So that means when that drops like that because of some sort of issue, every time you come to pump water, instead of pumping from the wheat pole up to the pump, you're now pumping all the way from the bottom all the way to the top, which could take anywhere from 30 to 60 pumps depending on how you pump. So lately. Uh, we've been having to pump more and Cameron's been having to pump more and we want to we want to know why so I talked to the guys at simple pump told them what was going on and they said it sounds like what you've done is you've damaged your seals in the head of your pump so you'll have a seal at the bottom a seal at the top and by us forcing the pump during the winter time when water was frozen in that one-way check valve that we were using as a spout, then it was putting excess pressure and force on those seals and damaged them. So after talking to them, they were awesome and they sent us some new seals and they sent us also um, some of these uh, brass shims that go in between the joints because I told them our brass shims were getting really wore out because we use it so much, look at that. See how that's flattened out like a pancake and look how thin and crispy it is? See that? They're all like that. See this right here? Okay. 
here's some brand new ones that aren't thin like paper like that okay so we're going to replace these brass shims which are basically like o-rings okay and then we're also and here's some too we're going to remove this assembly right here to change the seals and these are very uh similar to a hydraulic type seal uh they're u-cup and we're going to install those so here we go all right so what i've just done is removed the four uh, 3 16 allen wrench screws um, that hold the base of this lever uh, onto the well and now I'm going to take my crescent wrench um, and try to undo the uh, this mechanism that attaches to the handle from the main rod that went easier than I thought it did because when we um, first installed our simple pump uh, we were having problems with the pump handle coming unthreaded from the main rod so they I called them and they advised us to put thread lock on there if that was giving us issue and the type of thread lock we put on there is a really strong one so I, I was afraid I might have to heat this up to get it come undone but I was able to just muscle it off so I'm hoping I'll be put it, be able to put it back on there without it coming unthreaded again but if I do uh, if it starts coming threaded, I'll just get more thread lock. But anyway, you can see this is the the pump handle with it has a lever action, and uh, there's the threading that goes into the main rod or piston, as it would be. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know the lingo. But anyway, I'm going to clean this up really good with some vinegar and some paper towels and put those uh, those new brass. Uh, washers on there but let's go ahead and see if we can get in here and change these seals out you'll notice that this fitting right here whatever it's made out of it has no edges or anywhere to grip but um, the video i watched with a simple pump employee uh, just using a pair of large channel locks uh, and so i'm going to give this a good grip oh yep yeah, it's coming right undone Okay, well that's why they use those channel locks. So this piece right here unthreads and comes up, and this is where your seals go. And I can actually feel those seals rubbing on this rod and applying some tension or some friction. But I'm gonna unthread this, and then there's a secondary position that you should be able to pull this up to. And, uh, Oh, I guess that's it. Okay. So anyway, down here you'll see there's an O-ring that this piece uh, threads pressure onto. And then inside here, I don't know if you can see, but inside this is those two U-cup seals. So that's what we're about to place, replace right now. And it's just me by myself, so I won't be able to videotape it. Um, but here is the seal, so I'm getting ready to give it a try. All right, so I've already taken the two old seals out and I can show you how, see how it's a cup? Uh, it's like a U cup in that seal and both of the U's are pointing down. Uh, so it's a double sealed system. I already put the new one in the bottom. I thought it was gonna be real difficult. You can see how um, you put it on there and it's almost the exact same diameter um, So you got to get it in and work it in there, uh, but you can uh, It just takes a little patience and get in there work it in with your fingers and you can get that seal uh, Into that groove nicely. So I'm gonna do the second one. All right, Got them both in there without a lot of fuss And uh, I'm just gonna make sure there's nothing No large pieces of anything on this rod I'm going to re-slide this piece on here. I'm actually going to thread it a little bit. I don't just want to push those U-seals, force them down. And, uh, you know, I thought this piece right here, it's an interesting texture. And I almost thought it was made out of some sort of graphite or stone. Uh, but it's just plastic. <laughs> so here I am just overthinking things. Um... And I realized, of course, it was plastic once I took it off. So now 
thread this on here. And the rod is trying to fight you back because, you know, the rod, the pump has a nice um, grip down there at the bottom on the side wall of its casing and it probably has a little bit of a vacuum on it so it's the rod fights back as I turn it it wants to turn back in the position that it's relaxed in uh, but man this just can be hand snug it does not have to be cranked on obviously it being a plastic piece that's good all right so now I'm going to clean my handle and see what we can do so you can see how dirty this is and it needs a good cleaning. Matter of fact, you can see right here how it started to scratch the handle, which it's fine. Uh, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. The pins that hold all of this lever handle together are really nice uh, meaty pins that have a, a spring-loaded kind of latch in them uh, that it's directional and it locks on uh, everything together. And it's really neat because you can, and they're really good quality. You can feel that springy action in that when you push on that. And so you just got to spring that back in. I don't think I can do it one hand. And push your pin back through. So I'm going to undo these real quick and I'll show you. So here it is taken apart. And you can see how much abuse that has taken. And look at this washer. I mean, just look how paper thin it is. Look at, I'm actually just flexing it like, like it was paper. Like it feels like a hard leaf. Uh, so that thing has been worn out and here's the new ones right here which are not nearly as flexible and much more robust so we're going to clean this up and put those new ones on you need to spin with it walk with it until it threads we're going to stop that do you want me to stop that do you want me to stop it from spinning it stop on okay all right so I finished cleaning the handle, putting all the new O-rings on, cleaned it up a little bit. Of course, this graphite um, gets all over you. These inside here, built into the handle, is these graphite impregnated bushings, and they put off this graphite powder as you use it to lubricate it. Um, so I just wanted to clean it up and put fresh, those fresh O-rings on there. Give it a crescent ring. All right, so we got this bad boy back together. Looks better, it's a lot cleaner. Got all those new washers in there, new seals. So what we're gonna watch for now is to make sure this rod isn't spinning when I start pumping. Then when we get up, we're gonna get the water up to the spout. Little to no water will come out of this spot right here. Very, very little water. If water just starts running out, that means something, something's still wrong. go how many pumps was that six or seven all right the thing didn't spin no it's not spinning at all this is how you put water for yourself ah looks a little difficult <sighs> project complete complete check another one off the list